Hello and welcome back to Baking Butterly Love and welcome back to another painted cake tutorial. This week I'm doing sort of a winter greenery painted cake and I tried out a few different techniques to report back to you on how they work. So in the past, most of my painted cakes were either sort of a textured paint using a palette knife um, or I used an actual edible paint like the edible arts paint or gel food coloring. But for this cake, I wanted to try more of um, a standard painting technique with buttercream and to see how well that worked out. And the verdict is that it's definitely doable, but there are some downsides as well. So I'm gonna walk you through all the designs on this cake. And while I do that, I'll tell you a little bit more about the pros and cons of painting with buttercream this way. So I'm starting out with a cold cake, that way it's nice and firm and easy to paint on. And then my dark blue buttercream that I'm using to paint with, I actually melted to get it a little bit more fluid for painting. And this brings us to kind of that first downside of painting with actual buttercream, is that it's never going to act quite like paint. It's not gonna have that same fluidity where it glides really easily off the paintbrush like it would if you were painting with real paint on paper. So you really have to embrace that style rather than trying to make it come out perfect. Um, so it could be a pro too if you like that sort of rougher, more varied look. Um, using Swiss meringue buttercream will work just fine. But if you want your painting to be really even and perfect, it's not gonna work so well. Anyway, the buttercream I started off with had just a little bit too much food coloring and it was getting curdled. So I added just a bit more plain buttercream to smooth it out at which point it started to look like this. So it's painting on a little bit thinner, but it's a lot smoother and easier to work with. So if you try this out, don't be afraid to play around with the consistency to get it to work well for you. And I'm painting these leaves really roughly with just about three brush strokes for each leaf. So I'm doing sort of one stroke to each side and then filling in the middle and fixing the point of the leaf as needed. And this is gonna be sort of my largest leaf pattern. So I'm painting it all around the cake first, and then I'll continue filling in with smaller patterns and more details. The next pattern is again, just sort of really rough. I grabbed a slightly smaller brush and I'm painting little clusters of loops. By the way, these brushes are from Sweet Stamp and they are really nice for um, cake painting and doing details because they have a little grip on the handle, but you can definitely use just regular old paint brushes from the craft store. If you do that, just make sure that you're only using them for food and not mixing them up with brushes that you use with actual paint. All right, so now that I've got my main leaf details all painted, I'm going to pipe some little poinsettias using a tip 352 for the petals and a tip number two for the centers. For each flower, I'm piping five petals and then three little yellow dots in the center. These petals are really quite easy to pipe. You just wanna give your bag a short squeeze and then make sure you stop squeezing before you pull away to get that point. You could also pipe these onto a flower nail, refrigerate them, and then transfer them onto the cake. But since they're so small, it's really easy to actually just pipe them directly onto the cake. And I think I'm making it look a little bit harder than it actually is because I'm trying to pipe without putting my arm in front of the camera. But if you are not filming, you can pipe these at a much more comfortable angle. Moving right along, I've got a few more details to add to this cake. Basically, I'm just gonna keep filling in empty space with more and more small details until I feel like everything looks nice and balanced. So next up are these little sort of berry flower bud things. Not really sure what they are. This isn't a botanically correct cake, but I'm painting on the stems with my little brush, then using a small round tip to pipe white dots, and then using my paintbrush again to just sort of tap a little dot of that dark blue color onto each white dot. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm painting on a smaller version of that first leaf pattern that I did. Now, if you look really closely, you can kind of see the paintbrush leaving a track in the buttercream, and that's because I've been painting for a while and the buttercream has started to soften. So when I mentioned earlier that it's kind of easier to paint on a cold cake, this is what I was talking about. If you have a nice chilled cake, you can really press that brush into the frosting without messing up the surface. Um, so that is another pro slash con of painting with buttercream because it is so thick. It takes a little bit more force to push it off the brush and onto the cake, um, but you have to have a cold cake to do that. Otherwise, it's going to start to dig into the frosting a bit. And I know a lot of you are working in warmer climates and working on a chilled cake just isn't possible either because it warms up too fast or you're dealing with condensation. So just know that you can paint like this on soft buttercream, but you have to be a bit more gentle and a bit more careful with your paintbrush. You also always have the option of using a crusting buttercream, like an American buttercream, which will hold up a lot better in a warm climate. And then now I'm using a round tip number six to pipe some red berries. I really like how the mix of painted and pipe textures turned out on this cake, so I'm definitely gonna have to do some more cakes like this in the future. If you're looking for more cake painting ideas and tutorials, I have a whole playlist of all my painted cakes. There's a ton of really good information in those videos, and you can find that linked in the description below, along with all the tools that I used in this video. So I hope this was helpful for you guys just to see a slightly different painting technique. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.